Every source has a source. The Athletic. Modern football terminology can sometimes seem deliberately confusing. Labels are given to things that are not new, or to express concepts that are quite clear, but these labels can make things sound more complicated than they need to. Two examples of this are half spaces and playing between the lines. These ideas are actually both very straightforward, and understanding what is meant by them and seeing past the jargon makes football quite a lot more understandable. Between the lines is the simpler idea of the two. The lines are the position of defence, midfield and attack. Generally, teams want to have some sort of arrangement while defending that creates lines that the opposition need to play through or over. These lines are there to block or win back the ball, and indeed they're often referred to as blocks. The vertical position of a line is orientated differently depending on how a team wants to play. Sometimes the defence will drop off to make sure they don't get beaten by long balls over the top against quick strikers or sometimes there will be very little space between the defence and the midfield to congest the space and make the lines compact. Playing between the lines then is simply the idea of the attacking team looking to get players in the space between these defensive positions. Obviously the defending team isn't going to have its players stood too close together vertically because that leaves too many gaps and so there is always some space between the lines. The trick is to find it. But why does it matter? Well, because, and this is a key concept of positional play, the movement of attacking players into these spaces causes positional overloads. That means that by manoeuvring players into these gaps, it disrupts the opposition's defensive shape and forces them to break their line. It's why the false nine has been so successful in some systems. By dropping into the space between the defence and midfield lines, the attacker requires a defender to push forwards or a midfielder to drop off. Or the false nine will have lots of time and space to dribble, pass or shoot. The idea of playing between the lines then is just a way of attacking that maximises attacking players arriving in these spaces at the same time as the ball. This forces the defending opponents to react and disrupts their defensive positioning. At its best, it's done with quick interchanges and rapid movement so that defenders are always having to react, leaving gaps elsewhere to be exploited. So if playing between the lines is the vertical aspect, then the half space is the horizontal. This term comes from the German Halbram, and it was probably first popularised by Borussia Mönchengladbach's assistant coach René Maric when he was writing for an influential tactic site. If a pitch is divided into five columns horizontally, the half spaces sit between the wide and the central spaces. There are two, and while it's easy to think of them as fixed in width, they can shift in size depending on where the opposition defenders are. So there are two key reasons why the half spaces are important. The first is that they often mirror the gaps between fullbacks and centrebacks and are therefore similar to what are sometimes called the channels. Just as there is space vertically between the lines, there is often more space horizontally in the half space because of the natural positioning of the defenders. Not too close, but not too far from each other either. But there is another, more important benefit. When a player is in the half space, they have a better body position in relation to the goal and their passing options. A player out wide can only pass forwards, backwards or in field, and it's easy to prevent at least two of these options. A player who is central has more options, but because of their field of vision and the congested nature of the pitch's centre, can likely not see or be able to pass the ball to all of those options. But a player in the half space can orientate their body towards goal, but still have a wide array of passing options and be able to see wide players ahead of them and any player infield from them in the central areas. This means that they have a better range of options, and movements of players into these areas can allow a team to progress and attack more dynamically. Ultimately, football is about finding and maximising space in attack, and compressing and denying space in defence. And as coaches become more sophisticated in expressing these ideas and at solving problems posed by fitter players and better defensive structures, explaining these concepts sometimes requires new and more precise language. But we don't need another striker. Listen, he's going to sign. My nephew's girlfriend's brother's barber his best friend to the Kidman assistant. Every source has a source. The Athletic.